I find that the podium puts a huge distance between me and the audience. Uh, so my topic today is called design, think, and engineering. How many of you have heard of the concept of design, think? Raise your hands. Okay, <laughs> I guess we'll start with the basics. How many of you have heard of the word design? Come on. I'm, I see somebody, few people here have bought a few designer clothes. At least that much, much I can see. Okay, so very quickly about me. Uh, I'm, uh, so here's my background. I am, I am a graduate of Stanford University. I, I got my MBA from Harvard. I'm a fifth generation family business entrepreneur. Uh, our family businesses involved in chemicals, plastics, pharmaceuticals, real estate, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I spend 20% of, of my time in nonprofits, which is where uh, I find great pleasure and the field which I love. Uh, one of our major nonprofits is the APJ Education Society, where we run 13 schools, 12 colleges, and India's first liberal arts based philosophy university, the APJ Satya University. You can see our logo around. Oh, that's the Education Society one. Okay. Um, uh, I was a best selling author for a month for a fiction book, and then Amisha's new book came out, and you know everybody, including me, was thrown off the bestseller list. Uh, I, Amazon has called me a cloud Jedi. Uh, I like that term. Uh, we are number one in India in the terms of, of cloud computing and its consumption. Uh, I think Tata is number two. Uh, and I'm obsessed with innovative curriculum development, and I'm obsessed with design things. In the last 10 years, I've had the opportunity to travel to about 47 countries and 245 cities, really trying to answer the question, what's next? What's happening in the world? How are societies, communities changing? Uh, and what can we, as individuals and as India, do about it? So this is what we apply design think to. And this is the stuff I just rolled up in the last three years what we've done. We do it to websites, marketing materials, strategy, books, papers, uh, bioreactors, instrumentation controls, en en energy systems, land master plans, legal documents, interiors, corporate gifts, internal and external policies, uh, service and customer support, department structures, relationships, cloud architectures, building architectures, financial products, R&D system, project structures, accounting systems, and so on. What I'm trying to get to you with this slide uh, is a fundamental understanding that when, when we look at design, what's the first thing we think? Designer brands, right? The second thing we think of page three personalities, fashion, catwalks, or graphic design, or websites, all this stuff. But fundamentally, design is the act of creation. If you create something, you are designing it. The problem is most people are terrible designers, and that's why we get horribly created things. But that doesn't make them not designers, they're just bad designers. So, I'm going to quickly cover the basics. Science, and this is the layman's term, so for all the people who have major degrees in science, please don't go after me if it does not match the definition you prefer. But science to me is essentially the continued expansion of human knowledge. Engineering is solving a particular problem using that knowledge. And for those who are engineers in the audience, that makes complete sense. But I get scared when I hear politicians and people use science and engineering in the same breath, thinking they're the same field. Oh, science, engineering, well, I accept them. But actually, scientists and engineers are two very different breeds of people, uh, and that's a good thing. Design, and this is our definition of uh, uh, design, is a disciplined approach and process to find a solution to any problem, challenge, or issue. Okay? The key words here is a disciplined approach. You know, when people think of designers, they think of people, you know, smoking cigarettes and drinking lots of alcohol and waking up saying, la la, I have created this massive design, right? Uh, but that's not true. True design is a very disciplined approach which takes a lot of time. And if any one of you has designed a product or service, you understand how long and how much energy it takes to go through, and it's a disciplined process. It's not these random sparks of inspiration that comes out. I get very scared when, I, when, when people say, Creative, creative people, you know, the crazy hair and they don't do etc. Creative people are some of the hardest working people in the world and they follow a discipline. Oh, did I skip a slide there? I just want to clarify, design is not art or expression, right? So when you create a beautiful painting, when you write a great book, when you make a fashionable thing, it's an expression of who you are. You write poetry, it's art. That's very different from design. When I talk about design, 
I am talking about the early definition, I am not talking about you coming up with this wonderful painting. And that separation is also required because a lot of people confuse art and design thinking oh, an artist is a designer, they are two very different people. If you look at the definitions back there, you see design is trying to solve problems, is an approach. Engineering is all about solving problems. Right? And so my contention is, this is, you know, every good engineer knows this uh, intuitively, right? The design thing and engineering are simply made for each other. In fact, I will go on and say that most, if not all, successful engineering projects succeed due to the application of design thing. And you know, I use the words inadvertently or without specific thoughts, because I see a lot of people who make excellent products, services, could do, execute fantastic projects. And, and I ask them, you know, how do you do this? And they don't say design think. Right? They talk about project management, talk about experience, talk about well, you know, URSs and systems. Uh, but fundamentally what they're doing is following the design think approach. So a lot of people actually end up using design think in, in, inadvertently. And if you look at a lot of uh, uh, engineering curriculums today, even out there, they have a lot of elements of design think built in. They haven't been able to ever capture it and say, look, this is the design think systems and perspectives that actually make this happen. Without design think, applied engineering fails. And I'm going to give you a couple of structures on design think to figure out what is it. Uh, design think is the short, short way to ensure engineering success. Just because you're an engineer, just because you try engineering doesn't mean that the, the, the project will succeed. In fact, the failure rate is something like 90% around the world, right? But if you incorporate the elements of design think, the, the chances that your project is going to succeed goes up dramatically. Mammy Vice is a fantastic movie, but my favorite quote from that is a drug dealer who looks at this person and says, I pay for a result, not an effort or best try. If you look at industry today, when they invest in a project, are they looking for a best try or a result? Yeah. Absolutely not. Right? They want a result. They don't want to buy Koshish kiya tha, experiments hoye the, do saal ho gaye, ho rahe. They're like, where is the result, right? So anything you can do, anything you can train a person to focus more and get that result, their value increases and their ability to deliver increases. And I would say, whether you are in industry or in academia, results is all what it's about. A quick word on innovation. People ask me, where does innovation fit into all this? And you know, innovation is my favorite buzzword. Uh, I have a couple of friends, we, we play uh, buzzword tambola in conferences like this. We have a little slot and anytime someone says, innovation, check. Industry academy interface, check. We need to change, check. Because we said it for so long. I've been doing this for 10 years. It's the same buzzwords that we use year on year on year. My contention is the definition of innovation is a byproduct of a great design process. You have a great design process, you achieve a result, Innovation is a byproduct. Innovation happens because you followed a great design process. And this is really important for institutes who are trying to go up in rankings, who are trying to get accredited, who are trying to achieve outcomes. In the next 10 years, the only high paying engineering jobs will be those which include design. Okay. And the reason why I say this, and usually I do a nice one hour thing on it, describing how economics are changing, but because of what I call the winner take all economies. And there's some great books on this, right? What is a winner? Who has heard of these, this concept, winner take all economy? Okay, here's a brief. 100 years ago, if you looked at any sector and any region, Asia, India, society, Delhi, Mumbai, New York, right? Uh, the, the, the value in that sector was taken up by about 20, 10, 20 local firms. Today, globally, the value in any sector is taken by 20 firms. So the 80% the of all the money goes to the top 20 actors around the globe. Same for musicians, same for cement companies, same for internet companies, same for uh, 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 telecom companies. Right? So what you have is basically 
that we've arrived at a place where the top 20 in every industry around the world take 80% of the value and the rest of the players are trying to make do with the 20%. Right? When you have a winner take all economy, what, it, uh, what you find yourself is everybody trying to be in that top 20. So the top 20 can't sit still because someone's out there to whack them every day. If you remember the top companies 10 years ago, 10 years later, everything's changed in those e e industries. And I, I, I don't have to go through all the examples of companies who used to be these great companies and are all dead now, right? Uh, but to be in that top 10, you have to create, you have to innovate, and you can't afford to try. You have to succeed. You have to deliver results. And that's why if the next 10 years, all the so-called jobs which we've had as maintenance engineers, clerks, this, that, engineering clerks as I call them, are gone. Because people will be paying in the top 20 people to create the great products. Apple's design teams aren't that big. Instagram had 12 employees when they got valued at a billion plus dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. I want to talk about Jugaad. How many of you have heard about Jugaad? Yeah, we all have Jugaad, right? Uh, and it's something that India has been, you know, obsessed over the last thing. Are they can have whatever they have. India has Jugaad. Kisi tara, we'll get it done, right? And I'm a big fan of Jugaad. Uh, but I want to sort of exp and so people ask me that, look, Jugaad gets things done. When I think of design think, I, I don't think of Jugaad. I think Jugaad is on the spot, very quick, make decisions, right? And we should, and I see a lot of people who say, we should teach engineering students how to do Jugaad. Right, the critical thinking aspect, the ability to go and execute projects and all. It's not a bad thing. However, so the US version is called Jerry Rigged, or Jury Rigged as it's pronounced, right? It's an old World War II reference, their version of Jugaad. Uh, if, uh, if you have a trouble explaining to an American what Jugaad is, say it's Jerry Rigged, and say, oh, okay, we get it, right? But it's also design, right? You're creating something, you're just doing it really fast and you're doing it often temporarily. So it doesn't mean the Jugaad guy didn't use design, he did. He just did it at an incredible speed and he didn't wait a year or two to get it done. However, if you look at the traditional comparison between Jugaad and plan, right? Jugaad is considered small. Plan is scale. You want to, be, you want to produce 100,000 tons of something, you go for the plan. You want a five ton thing locally which is not working, you go for Jugaad. <laughs> Jugaad is considered to be short term, right? Planned is long term. Plan is 10 years, 20 years. Jugaad, chal gaya. When it will stop, we don't know, right? Jugaad is risky. Sometimes that risk pays off. Planned is not less risky, it's just risk managed, right? Jugaad is possibly sustainable if you're lucky. Planned is usually made sustainable by design. Short execution time for Jugaad, Planned usually, and I'm saying usually again, there's exceptions everywhere, it has a long execution time. Jugaad is short-term cheap, but planned is often long-term cheap. And so it just depends where you're falling in. So my point to you, however, just for the Jugaad thing, is that it's not bad. So please don't think that when I'm talking about design think that I'm saying, let's not do Jugaad, I want a planned economy with planned outcomes and planned things. What I'm saying, that well done Jugaad is accelerated design think. So if you do even Jugaad using a design think approach, you actually move to the benefits on the plan column much better than just the ones you achieved in, in the Jugaad column. But <laughs> this is my disclaimer. Jugaad does not build the future. It merely patches the present. So it's a nice holdover. But if you want a sustainable growth thing, you have to have a well-designed plan thing. Okay. So what are the current issues with engineering education today that prevent us uh, from achieving this so-called great design thing stuff? First, and you all know this, how many of you are engineering students or have been an engineering student? Yeah, yeah, people up there, right? All okay. right, we focus first on the theoretical fundamentals and ground for far too long, right? Uh, I meet professors who say, why is he doing a project? Maybe three years pele fundamentals ground. Fundamentals are not wrong. But the problem is we focus on them for so long 
that, that the person loses the ability to execute and do things on day one, uh, rather than saying, hey, do, learn, do, learn, and iterate. Projects which we look at in engineering education focus on the on outputs, not on the process. You know, I you know I think of you know when when you see those science exhibitions, right? And the happy parents come in and they see exhibition and there's this beautiful thing that's going and the sparkly lights and stuff is moving around, right? You are like, wow, this is such a fantastic thing. And if you and if you're at an IIT or somebody, you get a picture with the minister holding up the nice output, right? And so, unfortunately, we all have a tendency to focus on what was created, what's the output. We haven't looked at what the process was and concentrated, look, your output might have not been the great glamorous thing, but was your process correct? Did you follow it and was that taught to you? Uh, there's an early specialization without knowledge of tangential fields and, and micro contexts. At the APJ Satya University, the first thing we did was when we started this, what says, Every student can take any course that they want uh, until they figure out what they want to do with their lives. Right? It's standard internationally. India people are like, I can change my degree in year two or year three. Reporters actually came to me and said, Why are you confusing this student? Why are you asking him to take psychology? Why are you asking him to take marketing? Why are you asking him to, uh, 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 to take arts and crafts? But the fundamental problem is that we start in class 10th and 11th, 12th, we say science law, engineering mein jao, and we specialize without opening up the other sides of the brain, which is the fundamental issue with a design thing. If you cannot connect to the audience, if you cannot connect to the people, uh, you're not going to be able to create a very good product or service. There is a missing portfolio approach, right? A portfolio approach means that uh, by the time a student graduates and he goes to an interview, Right? And this drives me crazy. When I interview people, we hire something about 1,500 uh, people a year. I have a resume. What does a resume tell me? That the person had a great mentor who wrote a great resume. Right? Or his Google skills were so good, he might so chapa the five, ten best things written online. Right? What I'm missing is what this person can do. And he can tell me what he's doing, better if he can show me. Right? And so the portfolio approach means that by the time you graduate as an engineer in education, do you have 10, 20 things you can show? Look, I made this, 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 I made this. Hire me not because my degree says blah or you know my resume is so well made and perfect bond paper printed, but I stand on what I've built. I have stood on my portfolio. I don't know why this exists. I thought India would be fantastic at doing this. But it's a sincere lack of literature reviews for solving problems and projects, right? When I look at engineering projects across the thing, people are so desperate to come up with something interesting, they fail to see what was done earlier. And I see a lot of people reinventing the wheel again and again and again. And had they looked back and said, look, what's been done 20, 30 years in this field, they would say, oh, okay, this has been done before. And so many, I think part of it's insecurity. We can't think of new ideas, we can't think of a new solution. So we either cut, paste, copy from an old solution, or we think we found something obvious, but it's not really novel, right? And by the way, filing a patent doesn't mean you've got a patent. I've seen so many people who've said 150 patents filed every year. It costs 2,000 rupees to file a patent, Baba. I can file 2,000 patents a year as fast as I can do. How many patents have you got? How many have you defended it? How many have you executed on this? <laughs> that drives me crazy. Uh, this is how it has been done approach and I'm not opposed to this. You, again, you have to know the past to work on the future. But when I talk to engineering faculty, it's all about history this So they're so desperate to transmit all that knowledge to you. What they don't ask, what can be done, right? The good guys do it, but unfortunately this is something which has not caught up. And again, I won't reclaim it. Too many buzzwords, not enough details. Let's talk about innovation, let's talk about ecosystem, let's talk about blah, blah, blah. When I ask, very nice, but karoge kaise? What is the details? I find there is not much that goes in. So we are very good at copying things. My favorite one of course is now the cloud. 
we will do everything in the cloud. ठीक है बट वॉट इज द क्लाउड यू वट इज इट मैटर हाउ इज इट गोइंग सो आई थिंक दिस इज वन थिंग वी वी गेट ट्रैप्ड इन वी लाइक फैंसी साउंडिंग वर्ड्स विदाउट द डिटेल्स ब्रिंगिंग डिजाइन थिंग इन टू इंडियन इंजीनियरिंग एजुकेशन इज हार्ड वीव बीन ट्राइंग वीव बीन मार्जिनली सक्सीडिंग आई बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट वीव बीन ट्राइंग रियली हार्ड टू डू दिस बट इट इज वी फाउंड द इनर्शिया दैट इज देयर इज सो वेल डिवेलप एंड सो वेल इंग्रेन in faculty in students in parents that to get them to shift in terms of educators students get it by the way they get it they do it they get it they find and they fly and they are very happy but to change an entire system to adopt this is extremely hard so in the interest of time i'm just going to run through a few very low hanging fruits uh, that you can easily apply uh, when you go back and tell your people so five low hanging fruits train to use design think frameworks for projects even if you can't teach design think you can't walk through its philosophy and fundamentals its history its geography 200 examples of great design or even get that aesthetic design just get them to use the framework right and uh, the indian education system loves frameworks right here is a mark sheet ye use kiya check 5 marks ye use kiya 10 marks ye kiya 15 marks even that actually can make a fundamental difference in how the person thinks because if you set up their evaluation against a framework they at least have to use it so since most people here haven't looked at a design think framework here is a starter framework for design think i maybe should have put this earlier uh in the slide uh observation early fair framing of of the problem a deep dive in, into the context of the problem and the pieces the people and what's going on framing find the final problem and the challenge literature review finding out what has happened in the past ideation what can we do now solution prototyping field testing of said solution does it actually solve the problem iteration do this again and again and again i like to say you know if you see a shampoo bottle says rinse and repeat same thing rinse and repeat final selection and then how do you scale it from this to the problem this is just one framework uh every design think company who sells their consultancy services gives you their own nice framework with different names and all but this is basically this how many of you recognize this as a standard engineering framework well it usually it is right so you do right? it's nothing this is not rocket science right right and so again i go back to the point that if you are a good engineer you are solving challenges and problem you are using most of this already right but what i love about design think it encapsulates that process into something that you can actually go through step by step and a philosophy that you can use design think has inherited as much from engineering as it has from any other field people talk about getting thinking out of the box we talk about pushing people out of the box because when i if you when i imagine a person thinking outside the box they are sitting inside the box and thinking outside of it right and that disturbs me i'm like why are you in the box in the first place right and so the entire engineering education system has to learn how to throw people out, out of the box uh again at asu we we, uh, we do this by saying that at least 12 subjects mandatory you have to take that have nothing to do with your engineering degree so take psychology take dance take photography uh you know go and do something that doesn't exist the same thing by the way applies for faculty members when we review faculty members we always ask them what have you learned this year that is outside your field right it's very hard most people say what have you updated yourself within your field right but a lot of people don't ask what have you done outside your field we call this one world no boundaries because we don't believe there are any boundaries between disciplines it's one world it's just different disciplines looking at the same world from different angles but it also means that if you're trying to create results fantastic engineering solutions and you're and you're trying to train students to create those great solutions you have to view the world that way you cannot view the world that way if you don't have had the opportunity to study outside the, the macro context uh This, by the way, I, I must. I think Mark Zuckerberg gets some credit for this. This entire notion that to apply before understanding, right? 
and the common frameworks for normal education is you first understand, learn, then apply, right? Everyone say theory, uh, how many conference slides have you seen about the application of theory, right? I'll tell you something, we have about nine factories, right? And a 12th pass, low skilled worker with three months of training can build more products than most engineering students that I've met. And the reason why is they don't understand what they're doing fundamentally. They can't make the vectors and the models and do the stress tests and run all the equations, but they can actually build it because they've done it before they understand. And so a large part about it is if you remember in that framework, it was about iteration. How many times can you change it, right? We wait far too long to apply. Start applying, see the mistakes, see what goes wrong with it, and then try to understand what did I do and how can I make it better, right? They go hand in hand. Uh, uh, what I, we call it the day one build and ship uh, approach. Uh, if you look at the top engineering universities, especially Europe has a very good uh, record of doing this, the moment a student comes into the university, in the first two weeks they have built something. It doesn't matter what, they've built something. And the reason why is that you want to get them into building things from day one. And so they understand that, okay, all the knowledge you're going to get in the next four years starts with building. And it's Mark Zuckerberg's thing. Engineers ship or die. And this is something which I've personally struggled with, right? Everybody says, look, I have so many ideas. I've done so many things. I am so intelligent. Look, all the people, or, 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 if they just knew what I could do, right? And I see a lot of brilliant students who have this, how do I express that I am great? Well, it doesn't matter. If you don't ship, if you don't get the product out, if you don't build it, if you don't write it, if it's not out there, you're worthless. And this goes back to the entire thing. And so Facebook has this entire concept of ship or die. It said, that's great. You've had a great meeting. You've talked about this stuff. You've made 20 presentations. But when is it going to ship? When is it going to be out in the world so that people can actually start using it and you can start creating and iterating it? So the ship or die approach is consistent with design think. It's that design it, look at it, ship it, and iterate it. We don't ship. We keep writing nice project reports and papers, etc. But where did it actually go? Again, the portfolio uh, uh, approach. And the reason why I love the portfolio approach is because it gets students within a design think framework to start really, really creating things that they can understand. You, I can keep talking about design think, you know, until the cows come home. I can, you can read books on it. But until you haven't done it yourself with your own hands, at least a dozen or two dozen times. A, you don't respect it. You don't see why is it that great. And B, at the end of the day, it's not going to become muscle memory, right? I've, uh, one of the things we've done with, with, with our people is send them to design think workshops, right? Uh, a few years ago, we, uh, we, we, to prove to the Indian government that innovation can happen, we flew in about 12 people from a MIT. We got 170 people from all over India, locked them in a school. And we said, you have one week to create products. In one week, they made 120 new products with prototypes that worked. And each costed 2,500 rupees in R&D spent. Uh, we got in the National Innovation Council involved. Sam Pedroji at that time was there. He came on and had a look. Our entire point to them was that if you use design think, if you use these methodologies, you don't need a $50 billion national R&D budget to do it. Uh, I'll tell you a thought. I had a conversation with one of the top fundraisers of a top university in this world. I won't tell you which one, otherwise I'll get into trouble, right? After about an hour and a half conversation with him about, you know, how are they spending money, how are they creating projects, how are they number top 10 in the world rankings? And about two hours of digging his brain, etc., I asked him, so basically your solution is throw a bunch of money at it and we'll solve it. And he thought for five minutes, so that's basically it. We throw more money at the problem than anybody else on earth and that's why we get the Nobel Prizes, and that's why we get all these nice things. I said, could you do it at one-tenth the price? Probably, but the risks are higher. You have to actually plan it out, you have to actually think it out, it has to be done on a shoestring budget. Uh, you'll be surprised at the amount of wasted money that goes into inefficiencies that way. I, uh, the reason why I say they smash the project into the real world, that will show bad design, uh, because 
I am seeing projects and portfolios and things that people come up with and you'll get this nice 50, 60 page report. We went out to the thing, we met the villagers, we saw they had this problem, here are some drawings of the engineering concepts that came out, here's a prototype and here's a nice thermocall thing showing the village and the prototype and everything working, right? Uh, not enough institutions encourage their people to go and actually test it out in the field, in the real world, right? What actually happening? Can you get one village to use this? Uh, and some of our top universities and institutes in India are very guilty on these. I see these nice things. Oh, so and so institute has made this product. You know, every 20 products come out. Five years later, kahaya, what happened? Which village they saved? Why isn't India changed? I don't know. And the primary reason is cause of the outcome problem. Looks glamorous, makes for nice newspaper headlines, gives a puff up to the, uh, the faculty who's doing it. But when it hits the real world, the design issues come up. In the real world, I mean real companies and what real students need to be doing when they're uh, trying to come up with products and innovations is hit the real world as quickly as you can because the first prototype will never survive being hit into the chaos that is the world and particularly India. Oh, well, I'm making good time. Uh, my, my bonus low hanging fruit. You can use design thing to design the curriculum as well. If you looked at that prototype, Right, that observation, that creation, going back, looking at it and do it. I am shocked at the number of people who don't actually do design think in the, in the, in the engineering curriculums. They don't look at the context, they don't look at the, lit, uh, the literature review, they don't look. It's a lot of cut, copy, paste. Right? It, is, it happens around the world, it's not just India. It's what I call lazy design. But if you actually apply design thing to curriculum itself, where you're iterating, where you're changing, you can actually get a fantastic curriculum in a very short period of time. It's hard in India because in India, a lot of our institutions have the arrogance to think that sitting in Delhi, they know what's best for every single child and student around the country. Right? And I'm glad to see a lot of that arrogance is changing now because it has not been working. It's the Einstein theory of insanity. Doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results. So I think we're going to pretty much end on that. Thank you for your time. I, I know it's been a really hard day and you know, lunch is almost ready. Are there any questions? Or have I been able to cover everything reasonably well? Okay, brilliant. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to leave with you with, with one final thought. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to leave you with, with, with one final thought. Um, when I, I was there at the end of the panel, right, there were a lot of people who were talking about, you know, India's great potential, India's changing their thing. Uh, I want to warn you, there are 15 million young people who will be looking for a job every year. That's the government's figure. If India grows at 7%, there are only 3 million jobs available in the formal and informal economy. 12 million young people got a job, half of that being women, it's actually less because of our brief flirtation with uh, female infanticide in the 1980s, which went crazy. But of course, since I'm a bad mathematician, let's say half. Six million women, most probably, and I'm sorry to sound sexist, stay at home, become home employed, work in the fields, wait until they get married. Six million young men, high aspirations, education not really worth much. Six million is the size of most European countries per year. What does society, social unrest look like with six million people with nothing to do? This is going to be compounded by the problem that with automation, last three years particularly, forget about everything you know about automation you heard before 2013. Since 2013, something snapped. And what we are seeing now is in our factories, in our jobs, Earlier factories would run 3,000 people, 330. We are setting up a new plant in Singapore. We only are using three people. Right? So even if you have Make in India succeed, even if you have all a huge boom of new business that comes in, the number of people they are going to employ for the check on the GDP is abysmally low. And my contention is that India has almost lost that boat. We can't wait five years or ten years in slow moon to do happen. The US is struggling the same problem. Europe is struggling. They don't know what to do. And we've sort of been caught with our pants down. 
we've hit the worst time for labor markets in the history of the human race. Uh, and we've done it now versus China, which hit it 15 years ago, and they could get that nice upswing. My contention is that design think is an easy, quick solution to really transform the way we think about creating things. And India really needs this now. And we don't have five or 10 years to wait. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. Please add me on LinkedIn and uh, send me a tweet on Twitter. Thank you.